Welcome back to Let's Play Stardew Valley. My name is Falco Punch 64 and in this episode, we're just going to take care of more farm stuff. I keep wondering, it's like, how am I supposed to say what happened in the last episode or this episode? Because there's really, I mean, really, what is it? It's, you know, we're taking care of farm stuff. There really is no story here to be told. We did actually learn a bit about the community center that um, it's just dilapidated and the mayor wants to get it worked on. I believe we're going to help out the community and that's what we really would do. You know, if it was something like a real life thing, I, I really would go on there and say, you know what, let's get the community center going. Just don't give this over to Jojo Mart. You know, they can put their distribution center somewhere else. Unless it was going to give people a lot of jobs, which it doesn't in this game, but you know, you know, the community center, I think is more important. We have one around here, actually. We have a couple of them around my area. Don't know what they're used for though. Uh, one of them used to be a skating rink and I don't know if they still do the skating rink thing, but that, it was a skating rink many, many years ago when I was, you know, in my uh, teens or pre-teens and all that. We used to go up there every, I think it was like Friday and Saturday night, that skating rink and everyone going there with the rollerblades or their, I think they could rent out or just, I don't even know if they rented them. I think they just would borrow out the, um, the quads, I think they call them like the four by four, I mean like two by two, whatever you call it. The ones that aren't roller blades, but like the regular old style skates and people you would use those and stuff and you'd have to turn them back in. But I don't know if they still do that or not. It's been so damn long. What's going on? Oh, it's been so long. I think, I don't know what they do up there now, but it's there. It's just, I think it even says community center on the outside. Lots of memories up there. Um, that's that was just where everybody went you know like all the young kids anyway went back then was the community center so i have a little bit of a soft spot in my heart for community centers or rec centers and you know places like that where people have like the little you know basketball courts and stuff like that for the younger kids and stuff to hang out at and give them somewhere to go you know we we were gonna they were talking about getting us a skate park here at one point when I was a teenager. And I was like, oh my God, yes. And of course they didn't do it because old people. I think it was like old folks were complaining about, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what they were complaining about. I guess they were thinking people go up there and get hurt, which fair. I mean, it's a skate park, you know, getting hurt kind of is expected with skate parks. You know, that's, you know, if you're riding around on a skateboard and you fall on concrete, it's gonna hurt, you know, but you chose to hurt yourself kind of thing, you know? I always wondered about insurance with skate parks, like how bad that is. Maybe they just have to make people sign waivers before going in there or something. Saying, yeah, you can't sue us, you're at a skate park. I mean, get real. But I always wondered about that because you know it seemed like it would be just a liability nightmare, almost like, you know, an amusement park. You know, just their insurance has to be outrageous. Or carnivals too, probably. Alright, let's get some uh, potatoes and start growing those as well. We don't have many, but whatever, we can add a few into the mix why not our little field has been like a mixture of different stuff we actually bought it from the wrong store that's fine though not gonna no, don't get mad get glad that's what i say when i do something stupid that was an old i don't know if they still do that or not but that was the old slogan for glad trash bags don't get mad get glad it was a great net. It was, it was a great little, I mean, it obviously stuck with me. So it must've been a great marketing idea. Don't get mad, get glad. You get mad because the trash bag would rip, but glad bags won't. And all intents and purposes, I guess they don't. I don't, I think I, I've used glad and hefty and neither one really tears on me. I always get like the ones where it's like the flexible ones though, you know, where they can really cram enough junk in there you know where we can save a little bit of space in the cans out there and also be slightly more environmentally friendly i guess even though it's not really what i'm thinking of but you know 
a lot of it's laziness. You just grab the little, I got one of those scraper sticks because we got five dogs and you know, you can tell why you would need a scraper stick when you get five dogs, but you just use that to compact the trash so you can be lazy and not have to pull the trash bag up. So, but it also helps the environment just a little bit. So don't get mad, get glad. This is not sponsored. And if you don't like glad bags, I guess go get hefty because I don't care what trash bag you use, really. No one should. As long as it's not those crappy commercial ones that rip like instantly that I had to use when I was a janitor. Those things sucked. And they and I knew they sucked because I was the one that had to clean the shit up after they ripped up. So we got our field. This is a nice little field right here, I think. I mean, if you look at it, it's gonna be a decent little harvest. It's gonna bring in some money. Rat problem, investigate the community center. We'll deal with that later. Um, let's go ahead and clean out this field because we might actually do, not this particular field. This is where we're going to put our animals probably. Or maybe something else. Um, I know I'm going to set up a shed eventually somewhere around here, but yeah. Our biggest priority right now, my first goal in mind is for us to be able to get a upgraded backpack, which is going to cost, I think, $10,000 um which will help us a whole lot so that's our main goal right now is to get enough money to get an upgraded backpack so that's what objective number one is and i'm hoping we should be able to do that once we get this field fully you know taken care of i forgot all about that button but that does make it a lot easier doesn't it But I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Um, if you if you are, you know, I know it's corny, but hit the subscribe button, like, comment, all that good stuff really does help a lot if you do. Um, it just helps us get out there to more people and just, just helps me a lot. Just not really out of money or anything. It's not a money thing. It's just that when I, I want to build a community and I want to build at least a small viewer base where I, I'm not working this game and I mean working this channel in a vacuum like I want to be able to be like hey what do you want to see next and actually have people say what they want to see next you know so I can help you know basically have like a collaboration with you is what I want to do so so because I don't want to I mean because right now I'm kind of shooting in the dark trying to see you know, a balance of what I want to play versus what I think you want to watch. So if I'm not being told what someone wants to watch, you know, or what someone enjoys, you know, like someone's like, I enjoy your PlayStation stuff more than your Stardew Valley stuff, then we can work on more PlayStation stuff or vice versa. We like Stardew and don't stop playing the retro stuff. Okay, we'll play Stardew then. You know, I just, you know, I don't have that feedback at all. So I don't know what you want to see so that's that's why i'm saying um please share it around is is because of that because it'll help me a lot when it comes to you know creating content more efficiently can we sell this set probably might as well sell this crap too well we can't fit it great um Put away the watering can because we don't use it anyway. Put the acorns right there. Um, is there anything else we're not going to use, really? Well, we could just keep the rest of that stuff. It's fine. Um, we're going to go ahead and just throw this one potato in here. Google is 354. Getting a little more used to the mouse and keyboard again. I'm still um, debating on if I want to pick up another PS4 controller or not because 
or PS5 controller for PC because the one I got died in like 20 days, which I looked at the more negative reviews of it and a lot of other people said it started having issues sort of like I did in about a month, which is unfortunate because that thing was so comfortable. But I don't want to just keep having to get the same crappy controller over and over again where just every month I had to buy another one or send that one back for another. You know, I just don't want to have to do that. So, but the problem is the official wired one for the PS4 is like 50 bucks and I'm not paying that for a controller. I'm, I'm just not. And when, the, you know, you can get a Logitech F310 for $15. And, and that's like, you know, the standard of PC controllers of cheap ones anyway. Except for like, of course, the Xbox controller, which I have one of those somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but the 310 feels better than the 360 controller for um, platformers and PlayStation type games, in my opinion. Whoops. Picked the wrong place. We need to go to Pierre's. Pierre, okay, main areas. So we got up to two grand right now. Um, just kick the can because why not? Okay, so let's go to potato seeds and we're going to put those in the other place. All right, well, we do need to still seed this garden, so we're not going to put it in the other field quite yet. We're just going to slowly transition this one into potatoes, I guess. Do we have enough potatoes to fill up this garden? I think we might barely have enough. Yeah. Just right on, the, right on that line of it just having just enough to put it we have like one left so we'll throw that in there well we got some parsnips too so we can throw them out here uh make us another little row won't fill it up obviously but it'll just give us more space to do this okay so As for people asking what we actually grow on the farm, it's my brother's farm. I work with him sometimes. He is actually a goat farmer. He also raises chickens and he has a small garden where he grows a variety of things. Um, I also work with most of the very large farms around here where the majority of them grow corn because of ethanol or also uh, Really, the main stuff that they grow around here is corn, ethanol, cows, and tobacco. So, well, I mean, corn is made out of uh, corn is made into ethanol because ethanol is, you know, booze, and it also is used for like cars and stuff. But yeah, I remember when they first had the um, the really big like explosion about ethanol cars and talking about. They are going to move everything to that. And every farmer around here and their mother all just, the next thing you know, you see cornfields everywhere. <laughs> just like, just, just, it was like children of the corn or some shit. It was crazy. Just everyone just like, it was nuts. Just everywhere. And now that pot is actually legal in Virginia, I would not be surprised if people are going to start getting licenses or something or getting some state I'm sure you have to have a license to do it. People grow on like pot farms and stuff around here. I would not doubt it at all if there are going to be marijuana plantations around here. I know that there's there's one not far from my shop actually, and I did some work for him, um, some side work for him, where he was growing those hemp plants for like CBD oil and you know vape stuff and. Pretty much all that CBD stuff, and my brother also does make CBD. Like, he grows those really big hemp plants. The funny thing is, is because before we legalized pot, 
he had a bunch of hemp plants out there because he was basically selling the hemp trees for you know profit obviously and he was making a lot more money on hemp than he was on anything else that he was growing out there and he like the cops showed up and they thought he was like growing pot so like what they're like what the fuck we got reports that you're growing pot out here and he goes that's not pot that's hemp and he like explained it to him and showed him that it was not pot and they left him alone after that but that just shows you how ignorant the people are around here about pot and hemp and all of that stuff and you know or were at the time this is a couple years ago so but i always thought that was funny that he had all these trees out there and they had little what looked like pot leaves coming off and the cops thought that he was growing a bunch of weed out there in the country but he's not he wasn't and they left him alone after that and he's made some decent money off of it actually but he does like a variety of stuff he no nobody i don't work on plantations because there are plenty of them around here and those people are rich as fuck like those people that own like the plantations around here my god they are loaded like we're talking about like multi-millionaires around here like redneck millionaire or something water and camp proficiency hoe proficiency bee house speed grow farmer's lunch and a tapper and a cherry bomb yeah those farmers around here like the the big time ones not like me and my brother they are like yeah <laughs> I mean, I've worked with them, so I know I know a good amount about them about it. And my uncle, actually, I don't know if he still does. I know he doesn't anymore, but he used to be one of those surveyors where they go out there and they like draw the line, property lines, and um, zone particular properties and stuff to get like the you know the manure and shit thrown on it. And don't take my word for this because I can't remember because we didn't do it, but I've heard. At least rumor anyway that what they would do is they would take human shit and like that's what he would do is like he was like the surveyor guy that would have to like do whatever ecological stuff that he had to do to basically approve it for them to throw human crap out there like the sewer like they would throw raw sewage out there as fertilizer and that's where your organic stuff comes from buddy all that organic stuff you get from Whole Foods was actually part of a Whole Food in someone's ass at some point. It's gross. I don't know if that's a rumor or not, though. I've, I, we don't use any type of fertilizer at the farm, so... I mean, Rambo might get some cow shit out there once in a while, but... For the most part, he's not really doing anything commercial beyond doing the hemp plants, and that's it, you know. A lot of it is just, you know, he works a regular job too, but it's really mostly, you know, him just doing it f to um, carry on the legacy of the family is all. Because, you know, all of our family, you know, grew up, they were all farmers and stuff. And, you know, only about four or five different families pretty much owned all of the land around where I live. And, you know, our family was, was one of them, you know, and... You just carrying on that legacy, you know. We weren't we're not saying goat farmers. My uncle, I think it was my uncle, maybe my great uncle, and we used to call him Uncle Bug. I don't know why they called him Bug, but Bug was he had a farm and it was huge, like like the he wasn't even a plant. It was like an animal farm, and it was like I don't know if he made any money off of it, but it was in his family for generations. And you know, we used to go out there, and he had horses and pigs and chickens and everything. You know. It was pretty awesome but he passed away and you know his son has taken over and i don't think his son's really done nothing with it because he's uh i think he's running a he's running an auto parts store actually good, good guy i mean nothing wrong with him but he just didn't want to take on that responsibility of being like a farmer or whatever but he does own the farm and takes moderately good care of it but you know, we've had farms in the family. My grandma was a, you know, her entire family, you know, she passed away in 2012, but, you know, that's 10 years ago now. Uh, but, you know, she, her family, um, what did they grow? I think they were tobacco growers. I think they grew tobacco. And they were really well off in the, in the 30s, in like the 20s and 30s. 
they were really well off and because they were tobacco farmers even during the great depression i don't think they were really hurting around here at least because their agriculture was so strong and it wasn't all based on wall street and um those type of more corporate jobs were not what they were doing they were basically fending for themselves anyway from the beginning because my um her parents were actually from germany like like my grandmother my father's mother was german like completely german spoke english but i believe her parents spoke german and english and she just spoke english i don't remember her ever speaking german to us but i know she was 100 percent german and my dad my grandfather my father's father I think he was British, just like 100% British. Like his whole entire family came on over a boat in the 1800s too. So, no slave owners. But that's that's that heritage, and you know they were all farmers, and you know all of that stuff out here in the rural area, and you know south southwest-ish uh, Virginia. You know, and then I've lived in Richmond for a while and lived in Atlanta for a little while and Chicago went up there for a little while and Canada and all over the place. So I've been around, but you know, farms in my blood. It has been for generations and centuries and decades and probably millennia. Well, really everyone, everyone's family was farmer at some point i imagine i mean you had to be unless you wanted to live in a city and be a socialite which i don't know i don't think i could do that. i'm not social enough to do that shit i used to be when i was much younger i was a lot well i'm not old now but i'm saying when i was in my 20s in teens i was a whole lot more social because i had such a bad home life so my whole you know i basically stayed away from home as much as possible and now that my home life is perfect for the most part aside from having to clean up after those damn dogs all the time which that's just a minor thing i mean you got dogs you gotta clean up after them you gotta take care of the babies but besides that i don't don't really have that hard of a life anymore you know it's a lot nicer and since it is nicer i don't really feel the need to go out there and make it more complicated by getting into other people's drama so not the most social butterfly anymore, but I still, I still miss the community of it, but I don't drink or smoke or do anything. I barely vape, you know, I have a vape and I used to chain vape all the time, but hell nowadays, sometimes I go a whole day, sometimes even more than a whole day and don't even touch the thing. It's just, I don't think I've touched it today. You know, I just, it doesn't have any nicotine in it anyway, so. I just don't see the point. But it does, I put a little CBD in it. Not not Delta 8, not full spectrum, just broad spectrum because it helps with my nerves a little bit. And it helps with my back pain. Well, it didn't really help with the back pain at all, but it does help with my nerves a bit. Like if I'm having anxiety issues, which have been, for the most part, handled by a beautiful drug called Selexa, which has been a freaking miracle me it has no side effects so just take it and it really has helped i think i might have had one panic episode in the last few months and it wasn't even a severe one either and i kind of calmed it down pretty quickly but yeah so that selexa has really saved me honestly from a lot of hell but i still have my problems and we're not going to go into all that because this isn't a therapy session, but I just have to talk about something while I'm cleaning this farm up. But we need to get this X upgraded at some point, but we do, we don't have the money and we don't have the rest of that stuff yet that we need to do that. Talk to the puppy. And save.
Day 10. Okay. Go ahead and do one more day in this part. I think that'll be good. Beautiful day out here. Absolutely wonderful. Looks great. The cherry blossoms are going. The dog wants to come in for some reason. All of them are out there right now. Bye, babe. What's wrong, buddy? They're like little kids. They really, those, those twins really are like a couple of children. Cause you know, every so often they'll come back here when I'm recording and want to come in here and look at me and sit in my lap and just watch me play games and stuff. It's sweet. It really is. And they have their little routines and everything. And you know, every night I have to go in there, I'm just like a little girl and have to go in there to that little girl, the little girl weenie dog and Cover her up and tuck her in until I get night before she'll get settled in there. You know, she likes to sleep in the recliner. In the den, so I have to go in there and cover her up until I get night and all that for her to relax and go to sleep for the night. And she'll just stay up there all night. <laughs> that little tiny one, that chihuahua is getting mean with somebody else. I don't know what she's mad about now, but I can hear her out there snapping at somebody. <laughs> thing is mean. <laughs> She's the smallest one out of the bunch, and she's gotten her ass beat a few times over, you know, being a little princess about stuff. Picking up pooches. Hey, buddy. Hey. Give Dusty, give Dusty many pets. He kind of looks mean, but and I thought he was mean at first, but he's just a baby. He's sweet. Dusty's sweet. Just like I thought my buddy, my little boy, was going to be mean because he just had a real serious look on his face, but I got him. And when I got him, he was the goofiest little thing on earth. He's like a little clown. Like I've never in my life seen a, a dog this silly, as silly as him. He is just, he is just a little goofball. Like he's never mean at all. You know, sometimes he'll get in the clothes and get real serious looking. And I don't know what that's about, but you know, he doesn't get mean ever. Like he's never bit nobody, never even snapped or growled at anybody. He just barks when something's out there like really loud, but that's about it. But he, but sometimes he just gets that look on his face. Like he real serious. Like he's really thinking about something. I don't know what it is, but as soon as I go in there and if I crack open a can of Vienna, he'll turn back into a happy puppy and run in there whining at me, little buddy. I do love that boy. I love them dogs in there more than anything. I swear I'd do about anything for them. Hell, we have done about everything for them because one of them, unfortunately, got a tumor on her neck. The little one I was saying that was real mean. She had a little tumor on her neck because she just kept walking around squeaking really loud because she was hurt. And we kept taking her to the, the vet almost like almost every day it looked like and they would do this stupid chiropractic shit on her and it didn't work, of course. Because it ended up being a tumor, which the vet's a damn quack, if you ask me. She, you got to check your vets, because some vets will just basically try to get you in an endless loop of coming back every month and spending money with them, almost like a, your pet is a subscription service or something. But anyway, she had a tumor on her neck. I don't think it was cancer, but she had one on her neck, and it was causing her some issues. Well, we ended up having to take her to the city, and she got an MRI and all this stuff. I mean, MRI for a dog, you know, and she had to get an MRI and she had to get a surgery and all this other shit. And they had to shave the back of her neck and do all this stuff, take the tumor off, cost about 10 grand, I think total, um, was dad's dog. So he took care of it. And, you know, he was just all up. He was, more, he wasn't even upset about the fact that it cost eight grand to do the operation and another two or three for the MRI. And, all the other money he spent at the other bed. He, he was more upset that he was thinking that, you know, something was going to happen to that puppy. I mean, he really, you know, he, I, I don't think he would ever have the heart to put one down if he had to. A lot of people probably would have just put her down, but you know, she came back, she bounced back. She's fine now. Fur grew back just fine. Just, you know, 
Haven't had a problem since. She's just as shitty and mean as ever, and she's happy, so I, I understand that. I would do the same if, I, if it was my twins. I would, I would give up probably about everything to get those two straight. It really, I mean, I imagine that's what it's like having a kid, though, like a real kid. Is that, you know, if something happens, if you really love your child, that you would do anything for them. And that's how I feel about my dogs, so. I could never, I, I could never let anything happen to them. I mean, I'm so, I'm so ridiculously overprotective of those two. It's like, damn, you know, I'd be like an overbearing mama bird or something. I'm really ridiculously protective over those two. Don't let them go outside or anything, you know. Cause I'm scared they'll run off, get hit by a car or something. So, you know, when I go to the vet, I make sure that I'm giving very specific instructions of don't do all this bullshit to them. Just whatever they need, do that, and that's it. Don't don't pester them any more than you have to, basically. Because the thing is, the vet, I know that they have to do other stuff, which is fine. You know, I always tell them do what you got to do, but nothing extra, kind of. Because the vet will just run you the fuck up with all this stuff. You go in there to get the nails trimmed and come out with like a $400 bill for just bullshit. Just like all this test and that test and had to give them this thing and that thing. And just all that. They just nickel and dime you. And it's like four or 500 bucks. You come out of there for shit that she just came in there just for like a nail trim and a Bordetella shot or, you know, whatever type of shot they needed. So, you know, they really have, they, I don't know. I don't trust them. I, I've, I've, anytime they call trying to wear the hell out of us for money, I just block their number in dad's phone and I deal with it from now. I didn't tell him that, that I blocked their number because they kept calling him saying, oh, well, the dog needs to come up there for this bullshit and that bullshit and just, the dog is fine. You know what I mean? There ain't nothing wrong with it. There's something wrong with it, you go to the doctor. So I blocked him in his number, so. I blocked them in his phone so they wouldn't call him no more worrying the hell out of him and as far as I know they haven't so there ain't nothing wrong with them dogs in there we take we spoil the shit out of them take care of them and just really treat them like kings so there, there ain't nothing wrong with them and we ain't gonna get in that I'm not gonna let them take advantage of him again I, I don't know if they were taking advantage but it sure as hell seemed like it for a while All right, let's see. Yep. All right. Well, we, do we have any money? I don't think we have enough to actually plant anything. Do we? I really, um, guess we can go to Jojo Martin and see if we can just get what we can. Get a parsnips because we need as many spots filled as possible. And we don't have anything to really sell right now that we can sell right this second unless we wanted to go fishing. But we're coming up on time anyway, so I have to kind of wrap this episode up, unfortunately. Yeah, I've been, I'm starting to enjoy it too. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff to support the channel and just share it around let just even one person know that we're here just you know on reddit or twitter or facebook or whatever you can follow me all my stuff is below in the description if you want to follow me on twitter or whatever websites i have a discord server now you can check that out i will see you next time take care everyone good night